This maze that I'm walking through at the moment is being generated completely at random using procedural generation. There are random chests, there are random orcs in the map, and there's lots of different corridors that I can go through. So I guess the question is, how does this all work? Well, let's find out. So, how does this all work? Well, the first thing we need to actually do is generate a grid size. The one you're seeing in this video is 100 by 100. If you want to generate a larger grid size, you can have a much larger map, or a smaller grid size would give you a smaller map. We then choose how many rooms we want to generate. So in this example here, I'm generating 50 rooms, but you could generate less rooms. And again, if this was generated on a large map with less rooms, you'd have more corridors, or you could generate more rooms, and if you do that on a smaller grid, you'd have less corridors. Some rooms will overlap, but what's really important is that every room can be anywhere from too wide or too high up to nine wide or nine high. And these are generated randomly on the width and height, so you get rooms of lots of different shapes and sizes, and these rooms can overlap to give you new shapes. What comes in next is the clever bit. We've got something that I'm calling a pathfinding bot, but essentially it's just a yellow square with the pathfinding behavior and it's going to start at room zero. So the first room is randomly placed on this grid and it's gonna make its way to room 50. And it's moving to every single room one at a time. In terms of the pathfinding, there is a cost to going on the gray tiles. So where possible, it will always try and go back through rooms it's already been through. This reduces the number of corridors down and we also get something that flows a little bit better in our actual game. If it goes through a corridor it's already been through, there's a good chance that it will make that path thicker as well making it a main corridor. This can take anywhere up to a minute. If you run the pathfinding algorithm too quickly, it gets a little bit jittery and it can miss squares out, or it can give you some really weird shaped corridors. So I like running this a little bit slower and with recording as well, I'm having to run it even slower for this particular reason. But what you get is you get every single room visited and a corridor for each one. So next what we're going to do is go through every one of those gray tiles and check if it's got a red block above it, below it, left or right. This means we need to place a wall there. So we'll place a wall and then we'll delete the tile. If there isn't any red squares around it, we just delete the tile anywhere and we keep repeating this until we've done every single tile. This means we end up with a wall that goes all the way around every single room and corridor, but we don't end up with a silly amount of walls that might add extra lag to our game. Finally, once we've put all our walls in place, we can make the ceiling and the floor visible and we can also set up our 3D camera. Now this is just the 3D camera that I use in my 3D tutorials. So I'll put a link in the cards. I've just copy and pasted that code in. Once we're done, we end up with something like this. So a completely generated 3D maze that we can walk around. Now, as I walk around this 3D maze, you'll also notice there are some orcs and some chests. So in terms of the orcs, what I'm doing is I'm just going through every single red square and I'm picking a random number between one and 40. And if that number is either 39 or 40, I'm going to place an orc. I've also just added a quick event to make the orcs turn and face me. But again, this is very, very minimal. The chests are a little bit more complicated. What I'm doing is for every single red square, it's got a chance to either place an orc or a chest. And the chest count is slightly higher. However, if it randomly says it can place a chest, it then does a second check to see if the chest is against the wall. The reason I'm doing this check is to make sure that chests don't spawn in the middle of rooms. But all in all, considering what we're doing here, it's not too complicated in terms of the code that we're making. There are definitely some ways that this can be improved, add more decorations, make the rooms more exciting. And we could actually make this a functional game. But what we've got is the basics of some procedural generation inside of Construct. And at the moment, all it's costing us is a minute wait to generate the map. As always, I'll leave all the code in the description. I've also commented the code, so it should give you a better idea of what it does. Um, but that is it for today. Let me know what you think. Procedural generation and 3D construct, a good match? Yes or no? And I'll see you in the next video.